three, two, one. Happy New Year! Oh, man. 2012. So crazy. Can you believe it? 2012, man. 2012. I know, it seems like just yesterday was 2011. I know, right? Thank God that horrible year was over. I mean, what happened in 2011 anyway? You know, I can't tell you. Beware, beware. Uh, who the hell are you? I am the ghost of future stuff. Like the ghost of Christmas future? Or the ghost of future past. Yeah, are you Wolverine? No, I'm a spooky ghost, and I bear tidings. Tidings from the future! So Wolverine. Yeah, that's totally Wolverine. The movie you speak of is from 2014. I only know things from 2012. All right, get to it, spooky ghost. Your first tiding. Cloud Atlas will be very long. So Jackie and Justin will avoid it, but you, Sam, you will be confused on whether you like it or not. Well, the Wachowskis have made bad movies before, but I'm sure there's nothing that Andy and Larry could throw at me that I wouldn't see coming. Pretty predictable dudes, really. Uh, sure. You've got Lana and Lily figured out all right. I'm sorry, who? Moving on! The Hobbit, the, Hobbit. the Amazing Spider-Man, and The Dark Knight Rises will be significant disappointments. Yet, Marvel's The Avengers will blow all of you away, but you will all decide that a movie about an erotic sex addict and mental patient falling in love will be the best film of the year. Oh, oh, and Robert De Niro is in it. There is no chance that either the Avengers or anything with Robert De Niro will be good. You don't know shit about film, Spooky Ghost. All right. All right. Try something Try else, something then. else then. then. Dick Clark will die! Robots can't die. Whitney Houston will die! She's still alive? In technology, Windows 8 kicks the shit out of Vista. Well, that's an achievement. Facebook goes public. That's a house of cards. Facebook will cease to be in less than six months. Their advertising metrics are all skewed. No one can trust them. Yep. yep. Good call, brain surgeon. Whatever you do, don't invest in Facebook right now. Nope. Really, bad plan. It's not going to be worth $80 more per share in four years. Nope. Next vision! You're having visions now? I thought you were just a ghost that died in the future but got resurrected or whatever stupid ghosts do in the year 2012. Never question my corporality. Barack Obama will beat Mitt Romney in the presidential election. Uh, Next you'll tell me that the London Olympic Games are the best ever. Wow, way to go, Nostradamus. Actually, the 2012 Olympic Games kind of blow ass. I think this ghost is drunk. I think this ghost is hot. I wonder if she'd go out with me. Next premonition. You can't have premonitions if you have existing knowledge of the event you are alleging to foresee. That's a fallacy of many paranormal statements, idiot. Whatever. Whatever. Your final tip. In 2012. Can I get a drum roll? Thank you. In 2012. Yes. The world. Uh huh. Will not. Okay. End. Cool. I knew it. Well, that's all done. What's it going to take to get a drink around here? Sorry, we don't serve spirits. Hey, yo. <laughs> Woo. So a skeleton walks into a bar and says, I'll have a beer and a mop. Ha <laughs> ha. A blind vampire walked into a bar and then into a chair and then into a table. <laughs> so I'm going to try giving someone who isn't a complete and utter broken nutsack some advice on the future. Hey, hey, is that Biff Tannen? Nope. Nope. Just Donald Trump. Trump. Hey, wait a minute. Hello and welcome to 
to Sneaker Madness, the podcast about bad movies by bad movie lovers for bad movie lovers. I'm your host, Justin. With me, as always, are Sam and Jackie. This is a redo of our failed 2012 attempt where both episodes of our prelude episode and the main episode got garbled via digital stuff and whatever. Inexplainable. garbled this Event. It could be magic. It, I, if that's magic, it's disappointing with the powers of magic, the, I suppose. That's black magic. The curse of Roland Emmerich, I believe he's a black magician. He might be. Yeah. He's big on Sabbath and Aleister oh. Crowley. Uh, so we'll see how this is going to work out. Sure. Because we've already recorded this episode once before. Yeah, but it was so long ago, I have completely forgot what okay. I said. So, Well, I'm going to give you a little, little surprise hmm. here in a few minutes. But uh, first, we're going to talk about some movies that we already talked about once. Uh, starting with... 1988's Hellbent, the Faustian version of punk rock selling your soul to the devil so that you can get a record or contract and do a bunch of drugs. The punk rock version of Faust. I just said that. You said the Faustian version of punk rock, which is totally different. No, that's the same. No, it's like Pirate Ghosts and Ghost Pirates. It's totally fucking different. Okay, maybe you're right. Faustian version of punk rock. Which would be like a punk rock band singing about Faust? I guess. Huh. Or just a bunch of fucking... I think that was emo. Oh, okay. Mm. That's what the Faustian version of punk rock was emo. Okay, gotcha. And then uh, the punk rock version of Faust was this movie, Hellbent. Right, correct. Uh, pretty budget, but uh, we saw it on Blu-ray, and it looked fantastic. The transfer was remarkable. Very good, high-quality yeah. visuals. Uh, very 80s punk, late 80s envisioning of punk, like people that have nothing to do with the scene envisioning what punk was and then being like, well, these guys are obviously scumbags, so let's make them be in a morality tale about being douches. Something, well, yeah. yeah, and you know, I'm just going to say the Satan, uh, Faust, whatever the hell that was. No, that was Satan. Okay, yeah, that guy sucked. The de- oh, he was sucked. not a good Satan. He's the he's the guy the detective from the greatest television show ever, Due South. Oh, <laughs> about a Canadian Mountie who has to detect. A, uh, he has to be a cop in Chicago for some reason. Huh. They kind of tell you why at the beginning. You're like, okay, I I can get past that. It's kind of like Perfect Strangers. Like, why are you here, Balky? Well, I just didn't want to be there anymore. Well, he just he's so polite and tough that you just you don't care. Okay, all right. The the paper thin set up is like okay, whatever. He's like, I'm sorry, but I have to punch you in the face. And then he does. And How about the paper thin thin plot of Hellbent? Uh, you know, that's not really paper thin. Okay. Well, I just segueing back to the movie that we should be talking about. Uh, you know, I I really liked it. I did too. Yeah, I liked it a lot. I enjoyed it thoroughly. It's silly. Uh it's very not getting it right as far as the lifestyle and the the choices or not the choices, but the uh stylistic trends and and just that whole scene man yeah is completely like a white guy trying to be like hey kids i can rap in this television commercial too but i thought it was a pretty good version of faust and it moves and i'm pretty sure that there is no such thing as a satanist nightclub i don't know where they oh. go to go listen to shitty music you haven't been to des moines each other, punch each other in the face you have not been to des moines you have iowa or- have you I'm uh, just I'm but no, but I'm I'm assuming that uh, they could either have one or could not have one. You I just bet, don't know. I bet mm. there's one out there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so that's three dues from us. Yeah. OK, it's uh, on DVD someplace or Blu-ray, Blu-ray. only. I thought uh, got a sad one here. Now, when we recorded this episode earlier, the some of the events in the last couple of days hadn't happened. But uh, tragically, yesterday we lost TV's Alan Thick died of. Pancreatic cancer, I believe. I uh, dropped dead while playing hockey. Oh, that's right. He had a heart attack while playing hockey with his son. Yep. Yeah, dude. What? No. Uh, anyways, Alan Thick and Corey F- Haim and anybody else? I think the, the lady was somebody, but I already forgot. Directed by Jim Wynorski. Directed by Jim Wynorski. He it, throws himself in the movie here and there. In 1994's Demolition High, which I do want to mention that this one is on YouTube. You can get this on YouTube. Oh my god. This movie. You I, I don't know, you're you're kind of watching it and I felt really bad for Corey Haim because he looks 
like he's itching for a fix. He the looks entire like, he looks movie. Like hell. He looks and the, like hell. The more the movie goes on, the worse he looks. Yeah, but the less you care because there's so much Jim Wernerski bullshit happening around Corey Haim. That you're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That you just kind of ignore the fact that this once charming child actor now looks like a lump of hamburger meat that has also been uh, combined with uh, sausages. And is going through withdrawals. Yes. It mm-hmm. wants more drugs, the hamburger meat yeah. filled with sausages. It'll look sort of like the the wad of meat will look like a human if you give it enough drugs. God rest his soul. Hey, both of those guys are now dead. What both the of fuck, them are man? Dead. Too Alan soon. Thicke was fun, though. Yeah. Oh, Alan Thicke is great in this film. We should also mention that Alan Thicke is possibly a werewolf. He's very, he's got a, a werewolf hand. It's like that patchy long fur, mm. not like thick carpet like people's heads, like that long werewolfy. Like it just got glued on in the makeup department because they don't have any money, like mossy kind yeah. of fur. On his hand. Yeah, he's he's very hairy man. I I wonder if the rest of it, like his, if he's got a hairy back and hairy chest, or if it's just his werewolf if hands. You have hands like that. The rest of you is covered in hair. Yeah, but he doesn't have that reputation of being like, well, hairy guy. As I can remember, his name for the character's name off the top of my head from Growing Pains, Doctor Jason Seaver. That is correct. He's in a long sleeve fucking shirt in every episode of the goddamn Pretty show. Much. That is very I've true. never seen him in like a tank top. Uh, so he's a, he, I, I, the only thing I know about his personal life is he had a son, and he was playing hockey with him, which is cold and requires you to wear full length sure. clothes. So maybe his son doesn't even know if he's a hairy man or guy. Not. And, I don't know. Well, so his son is a big deal. The guy who sings blurred lines. No, that's yeah, a, yeah, that's no, his son. That's his son. No way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no way. Hello, Burr, welcome to 2012, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I didn't know that. Robin Thicke is that, Alan Thicke's son. Uh, that, that song's all about banging ladies. Dude, I told you. Oh, we talked about this uh, It's uh, some previous state of the podcast that Alan Thicke was a known carouser and womanizer. Yeah. He was all about getting drunk and banging chicks. Yeah. God rest his soul. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Demolition High, total fucking do. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. It is everything you want out of a Jim Wynerski movie, minus boobs. Not very many. Not very many. Actually, I don't, I don't think any. Zero boobs. Uh, some cleavage lady that sucks, but uh, everything else, shitty dialogue, shitty action sequences, stolen explosions from other movies, bad music, just everything that's great about Jim Wynerski is in this film. Totally do it. Last but not least, it's a, another mystery science theater movie. Uh, on the their channel via Shout Factory on YouTube. So go there. There's, I think, 30 films there. Uh, this one's The Village of the Giants, starring Bo Bridges and Ron Howard. What? From, like, 1962. Yeah, I've heard of this and never watched it. Uh, You're not missing anything. Oh, man. I loved this movie. I hated well, did it. Did you love it with Mystery Science Theater? I loved it both you... ways. All right. Um, I, I would have... Totally like to, like if we had stumbled across Village of the Giants, like 1962 giant people village with Bo Bridges and Ron Howard, we would have watched it and I would have walked out of it giving it a do. I'm going to give it a do either way because I think it's one of their funniest episodes. Uh, But this movie is bananas to begin with. It's uh, just to set it up. The very first thing that happens is a bunch of high teenagers crash a car into the fucking mountain and then just get out and start partying. Like they are maniacs. These teenagers, they can't stop partying and being orgistic. If that's a word, orgistic, uh, huh? Uh, very Caligulesque. <laughs> well, so, I mean, orgistic, I'll give you Caligulesque if they're not like, if they're fisting each other to death, then I'll give you Caligulesque. If, if this if it had been possible for them to fist each other to death in a major motion picture, they would have done it. In this one? Yes. They are uh. rolling around in mud. Their car is on fire, and clothes are flying off, and wild shit is happening. It's an orgy. So where's this party? Um, <laughs> well, it's <laughs> at the Village of the Giants. Yeah, I see. Uh, but anyways, they go into town, and they def- they discover flubber, basically, because Ron Howard is a vetted flubber that you can eat that turns you into a fucking giant. Huh. And so they take over the goddamn town as bastards. I thought it was a blast. 
I did not like it. It stinks. <laughs> it is a real bad movie. Uh, uh, so I'm going to give it a recommend in, do- in both positions. Jackie says no. Nope. Okay, it's my pick with 2012. Uh, this should be interesting. For the wild card, we've got a special edition of Pop Quiz Hot Shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pop Quiz Hot Shot. There's a bomb on a bus. Now, you guys have already been asked these questions. So we're going to uh, see what your memories are. I remember the first one already. Okay. But uh, we'll mostly let the uh, listener at home play along. They give them a moment to guess. Is it sad that my brain is going, do like it's just flatlining? <laughs> like, do you remember anything? No, just Call pretend Kiefer like Sutherland you do. Julia do I get Roberts. a bonus point if I name the first answer right now? Mm-hmm. No. No. I get a chance, Because the, uh, the, the, yeah, you have to buzz in and you have to allow for the listener to play along as well. Yes, Sam sucks at the buzz in. Name the devastating mid- North American Hurricane of October 2012. Oh, he's mixing them up. <laughs> he's shuffling the questions, Jackie. Damn it. What eh. was the major hurricane in October of 2012? Okay. Eh. Hurricane Barbara. Incorrect. But it had whiskey, cigarettes, and red fingernails. Oh. Yeah. I'll go with Hurricane Hugo. Nope. I can't remember what it uh, was. I give you one-tenth of a point because at least you had the female part right. It's yes. Hurricane Sandy. Yeah. Mm. Hurricane yes. Sandy. Uh, what is the year 2012 in Roman numerals? Mm. Sammy. M-M-X-I-I. Ha, 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 ha. That's one point for remembering. <laughs> I was really close the first time. You were. I think you said CC. I said CC, which is 100, and this was supposed to be M is 1,000. So. Yeah. A Judy Garland dress was sold for $302,000 in 2012 and was worn in which movie? Mm. The Wizard of Oz. That is correct. Who that beca- was the first question last time. Yeah. God damn it. You just buzzed faster. Yeah, and, you just totally. You just got a taste of your own not buzzing fast enough medicine. She totally- That's it. You're going down this one. Okay, ready? I got my pretend buzzer ready. She checked out there for a minute. I'll give you guys an easy one. What member of the monkeys died in 2012? Eh. Jackie. David. Um, I'm sorry? Who? Uh, the little short one. Okay, I need a name. Uh, there, there's three Davey. of them. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Davy. I need a full first and last name. There should be a time limit. Uh, Davy Short Guy. <laughs> I, I'm afraid that his name wasn't Davy Short. It was guy. not. Damn. Davy Jones. Davy Jones is God correct. Damn it. <laughs> I had a half right. I get a half point. Who became the oldest actor to win an Oscar in 2012? Eh. Kurt Douglas. No, but that's a decent guess, Jackie. Oh, I can't remember. Is it Christopher Plummer? I think Kurt Douglas died in uh, 05, but that was a good guess. Uh, yes, it was Christopher Plummer. He didn't win it for Star Trek V or whichever one he was with the... Remember they had the eye patch that they screwed into his head? Yeah. N- not? Not in real life. Obviously, it was makeup, but... Oh, D- Count Dooku. Yeah, he did have an eye patch. No, he didn't have an eye patch. Count Dooku? Yeah, Christopher Plummer. That's like a Christopher Lee. Oh, that's Christopher Lee, yeah. Christopher Plummer is a yeah, totally different right, guy. Right. He's the bad guy in Dragnet, which is a hilarious movie. What film, released in 2012, went on to win Oscar gold? Mm. For Best Picture. Eh. Yes, Jackie. The Swan. You mean Black Swan? Yeah. No, I believe that was 2010. That's a terrible guess. I already forgot again. Mm-hmm. You can't to go twice. Yeah, she gets to go twice oh, this time. Fuck. She doesn't get any points for it, though. <laughs> I just want to hear what ridiculous answer. <laughs> Lawrence of Arabia. Yes. No, that's an old one. Uh, 2012. Last of the Mohicans. Last of the Mohicans? <laughs> that's like 91. It's 92. Oh, oh that's damn. close. I'm I was just getting closer. worse. Very bad guess, Jackie. Uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just getting worse. It's Argo. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You, never, you can't remember it for whatever reason. Uh, number six and last, who won the Razzie for worst picture? Madonna. Jackie, what movie? Swept Away. No, not even close. Uh, it was Twilight 4. Oh, the that final. Makes sense. Twilight movie. I try, I try to erase, purge those completely from my memory. Yes. Sam, tell us about 2012. 
Well, 2012 was actually released in 2009, as it would have been far too late otherwise. Yeah, that wouldn't have worked. By the way, we are all currently dead. Hey! We collectively did not heed the words of Nostra Dumbass, <laughs> nor did we individually learn to fly limousines. For shame. Roland Emmerich tried to tell us in 2009, but we didn't listen. He also tried to tell us about magical gateways to the stars and how great James Spader's hair used to be. <laughs> oh, it was nice. I, mean, it would, I don't know if anybody had hair as good as him. He also wants us to listen to what 50 Cent has to say, as the main character, Jackson Curtis, is named sort of backwards after the rapper. Sort of backwards. What's the main character? Curtis name? Jackson is 50 Cent, whereas the main character in the movie is Jackson Curtis. I would say that's completely backwards. Not sort of backwards. Well, no, completely backwards Full on. would be Sit, oh. Ruck, <laughs> Nos, Cadge. Transposed. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, maybe. Flipped. Upon writing this, I realized I really know nothing about Curtis Jackson or his songs, but with titles like I Get Money, mm -hmm. I Get In, mm -hmm. and Okay, You're Right. He probably isn't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Emmerich stated in an interview that this would be his last disaster movie. It wasn't, not by a long shot. I don't know what he thought he was going to do, make movies about horses. Heavy drama? Coming this spring. An inconsequential day in March, starring John Hurt and Jane Seymour. Bring a pillow. I'm not against Emmerich making more personal projects, but he needs to keep blowing up landmarks until they ride his ass out of town on a rail. Which is... Soon. Almost. It's coming yeah. soon. Coming soon to a theater, not to you. Yeah. Coming soon to your grandma's house. <laughs> Roland Emmerich. <laughs> Ew, with bacon dip. Dude, if Roland Emmerich showed up, showed up with bacon dip. <laughs> At your I, grandma's? Yeah, I would let him in. It would be. I'd be so impressed. I would actually buy her a real present. I have met your grandma. If he did that, it would be a disaster. To her vagina. <laughs> what? <laughs> My grandma's a slut. Well, Roland's gay. Oh. So, poor Marvin. It yeah. would be a disaster of disappointment. It would be. Yeah. Boy, that vagina's disappointed. Oh. <laughs> but how's the bacon dip? It's good? Good. Magnificent. I think this is when I had had enough of John Cusack. Mm -hmm. After High Fidelity, I was out on this guy. Not that Cusack did anything wrong. I just, by this point had began to realize that Hollywood was just spitting out movies that could have been named Fill in the Cusack. Right. I guess I wasn't the only one, as now he's in movies with Tom Jane. Yeah, he pretty much went straight to VOD not long after this. I think there may have been one after this, but he's now Tom Jane and Nicolas Cage. Like, oh, sorry, guys. Yeah. VOD he just sounds like an STD that you catch, and then if you don't cure it, yeah, it's just going to get worse. If you don't go to the doctor, you end up becoming Steven Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Apparently, the role of Jackson Curtis was originally offered to Gerard Butler, Ooh. who turned it down, mm. which prevented this story from being three minutes long. Well, yeah. <laughs> he would have shot the apocalypse shortly post opening credits, <laughs> then filled the rest of the film by shooting a bunch of people who were probably bad. <laughs> I think. I'm, I don't know. They had, really they had leather gloves on and a gun. Yeah. I mean, he fuck them. He was in a subway. Well, you, I, am I wrong to shoot that the, person? The gun got put there later, Jackie. Yeah. Let's be clear. The other stars of this film are so various and numerous that I had to stop in the middle of reading the cast list because I got hungry. <laughs> uh, Seth Rogen was another one who had turned down a role for whatever reason. I have no idea. At this point in his career, he wouldn't turn down anything. No. Well, let's keep an eye out for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which character you want to die the most. Okay. Should be easy. It's which a Roland Emmerich film. Which disaster sequence or landmark downing was your favorite. Okay. Mm -hmm. Should be easy. It's a Roland Emmerich movie. And finally, who says the stupidest thing? Should be easy. It's a Roland Emmerich movie. Yeah. All right. uh, yeah. The film is not streaming anywhere that I know of for free. It is streaming, if you rent it on every single thing, uh, it is also widely available at any pawn shop anywhere. Yeah. So, if you haven't seen it, uh, give it a go. If you have, maybe it's time for a revisit. I don't know. Depends on if you like disaster movies or not. This is one of those that you can just put a flyer out and go to the pawn shop and buy it for 45 cents to a dollar. Yeah. And if you don't like it, try to see if the dog will catch it as a Frisbee. Sure. <laughs> or hey. kill zombies with it. Yeah. 
It's not the worst idea. All right, come back to us on Monday, and in the meantime, get to the chopper. Fans of Stinker Madness, iTunes thinks you don't like us. What? How is that possible? Well, it's because you haven't given us a review yet. Go to Stinker Madness on iTunes and take just a couple seconds to rate and review us there. While you're at it, hit up Stitcher.com as well. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at forward slash Stinker Madness and email us at talk at We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening and get to the chopper.